to do all the work of the ministry. Well, God's invisibility forces us to think, well, now I've got to do everything on my own. And we have a perfect example of how wrong that is in our own bodies when they function right. Does the ear get jealous of the eye for what it sees? Does the eye get jealous of the ear for what it hears? Do both of these things get jealous of the tongue for what it tastes? Do all of these things get jealous of the feet for what they trod upon? Do all these things get jealous of what the hands touch? Do all these things get jealous of the mind for what it thinks? Do all these things get jealous of the heart for what it feels? And all these things work in tandem. All these things communicate as we're called to do with each other. So we fear God so that we can access God's love and then can live that love with each other. So that we as our bodies, when they are healthy and whole, can function together. To wash our feeble parts, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians 12, because all these things work together as we grow, as we clean ourselves up. And that's what we're called to do with each other as Christians. Not to hoard up things unto ourselves, but to stay connected with God. To never run on empty. And when we think we're getting near empty, <coughs> as we do with our cars, as we do with our cell phones, as we do with every other electrical appliance that is ever in need of a charge, we tank up again. We read our word. We pray. We get around those with whom we assemble on a weekly basis so that we never forget that God calls us to be the hands and feet of Jesus in a lost and dying world. See, it's health to our navel and marrow to our bones so that we can give. So that we can give. That's how we honor the Lord with our substance and with the first fruits of all our increase. This is why our barns are filled with plenty and our presses burst out with new wine. Not so that we can be like the farmer in Luke 12 and hoard it up to ourselves and eat, drink, and be merry, but so that we, but so that we can share it with all those we meet. So that we can help all those we encounter as we pass along. I ask you to consider really and truly consider the, the ways in which we are frustrating proper communication in a healthy body by not being open and honest with one another we started on that track but we're still not there all the way and I'm going to parse communication out because I'm not just talking about confession of fault I want us to graduate to also re recognizing that asking when one is in need is also the communication that needs to, that needs to keep going forward. If you need help, don't be afraid. Ask. Because that's the proper incarnation of the faith God calls us to embody. Jesus calls us to embody. We ask because that's how we alert everybody else in the body that there's something off, that there's a cancer, but may, it may be of unbelief, it may be of fear, it may be of impatience, it may be of idolatry, any given number of things. There shouldn't be a need. And I'm not just talking about physical needs. I'm talking about spiritual needs. Nobody should feel alone. Nobody should feel unloved. Nobody should feel hated. Nobody should feel slighted against. Nobody should feel set upon. If we really fear the Lord. Nobody should feel like they're running on empty. That there's somebody they can't call. 
There's somebody they can't fellowship with. There's somebody they can't sit down and sup with. So I really want us to consider these things. What do we fear and why? Because if it's not the Lord, then we'll never truly be able to depart from what's wrong in our lives. We'll never have our paths directed by God. We will direct our paths and always run into danger. We'll never be able to bring up the next generation. For many years, I've, I've been running on empty. And I, frankly, I'm tired of it. I pray all of you are too. I pray all of you are too. God is calling each of us to do so many things. I, I, I beg you not to be bogged down in how many, how the, the many ways in which you can do A, B, or C. Could it just be focused on God showing you the part you can play? And playing that part the way God tells you to play that part. If you're called to sing a song, sing like Mary sang when she magnified the Lord, when Gabriel brought the news of Jesus' birth. If you're called to play basketball, bounce basketballs like Jesus bounced the loaves when he fed the multitude. <laughs> 